Hi, this is David Cobb with Move to Men, and you're watching The Punk Patriot. What is Move to Amend? Move to Amend is a multiracial coalition of groups and individuals coming together from across the country to demand a constitutional amendment to abolish in its entirety two illegitimate court-created legal doctrines. The first doctrine, the idea that corporations are persons with constitutional rights. Only human beings have constitutional rights. That means artificial entities like corporations, including nonprofit corporations, have legal privileges, but they don't have constitutional rights. The second doctrine is equally odious, also court created, and also part of the linchpin for how the ruling elite have stolen our sacred right to self government, and that's the idea that money equals speech. This idea was only created in 1976 in the infamous Buckley versus Vallejo decision. Um, and this is how the wealthy have been able to claim the absolute right to flood our airwaves and uh, election coffers with uh, billions, literally billions of dollars, including, by the way, from foreign corporations for the first time ever legally in the history of this country. So move to amend exists to demand a constitutional amendment to abolish those two legal doctrines because this is how the ruling elite have stolen our sacred right to self-government. And as a lawyer, what pisses me off about that, I mean, there's a lot of things that piss me off about that, but one of the things is that the courts legalize the theft of our promise of a democratic republic. So move to amend uh, is bringing together principled liberals, principled conservatives, moderates, independents, radicals, people who may disagree on particular issues, but can at least agree on the principle that the United States of America is supposed to be a democratic republic, where we the people are sovereign, we the people rule, but the one thing that the majority can never do through the ruling mechanisms is to violate the individual inherent rights of any of the human beings. Are you a Democrat? And if not, why not? <laughs> I am not, well, I'm a little D Democrat, uh -huh. uh, but I am not a capital D Democrat. By that, I'm not a member of the Democratic Party, nor am I a member of the Republican Party, because I know what most of your viewers know, and that is principled liberals have been lied to and sold out by the ruling leadership of the Democratic Party, just as surely as principled conservatives have been lied to and sold out by the ruling elite of the Republican Party. The ruling elite of both of those political parties exists to promote and protect the interest of the establishment, Wall Street. They've just been corrupted. So I'm a proud member of the Green Party because it's the only political party that has as its fundamental principles and values a commitment to peace, justice, democracy, and ecology. You ran in uh, 2004 for president. Do you feel that you are compromising our democracy by working outside of the Democratic Party? <laughs> This is, I don't mean to, 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 to be a, a, a smart ass, but listen to the question. Do I feel I'm compromising the democratic process by participating in it? Mm -hmm. That's insane. I mean, with all due respect, I mean, like, it's my right to participate in this process in whatever manner I see fit. Frankly, I think that we have to recognize that if, all you, if you want systemic change, and all you ever do is go and pull a lever and vote every two to four years, frankly, you're wasting your time. But there's a corollary to that. If you want systemic change and you don't take the opportunity to vote for people who are running for office for systemic change, you're wasting an opportunity. So uh, let's just be candid. The number of people who are running within the Democratic Party who are actually advocating a platform for systemic transformational change is low to non-existent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would say that, uh, I, 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 so number one, I, no, I, I think that question is posed in a, in a manner that is, it, it's both funny but also sad that somebody even thinks that that's a question that should be asked. Mm -hmm. Even deeper still, I would say that, that by participating in the Democratic Party and pretending as if you can get systemic change out of a system that is actually designed to prevent a systemic change from ever happening, I don't even agree with that. So Asher, I'll tell you this, that um, I think that the only wasted vote is the vote you don't use. So, you know, I definitely believe in voting, I vote, but I'm never going to vote for somebody who doesn't share my principles and values. The last thing I'll say is this, let's acknowledge that what it took so-called third parties, what I'll prefer to call an alternative political party, here's what it took alternative parties to champion at the ballot box. The abolition of slavery, women getting the right to vote, the creation of the Social Security Administration, 
unemployment insurance, workers' compensation laws, pure food and drug laws, ending child labor, the direct election of the United States Senate. Asher, the entire fabric of what we today would consider the bare damn minimum for a just and compassionate society, that fabric was woven thread by thread by alternative political parties who did their work when they were called naive and dangerous, who did their work when they were called spoilers. You know, alternative political parties is the only place where real systemic change can really be incubated. That's what history shows. So what do you have against corporations? I don't have anything against corporations. I mean, you know, I work for a corporation. Democracy Unlimited is a, is a corporation. I've helped form others. I think that corporations as a construct can be a very important way to help to organize resources, to organize people, to actually get things done collectively. My beef is with the concept and the principle that a corporation can claim inherent and alienable constitutional rights. You see, if you like only human beings who live and breathe, you, me, you, um, have constitutional rights. Which also means if a government, local, state, or federal government law, actually infringes upon my rights, I ought to be able to go into court and argue to have that law overturned, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and let's be very clear, if a corporation is claiming constitutional rights, it means they're complaining about some law designed to protect the environment, to protect the public health or safety, to protect workers, to protect the integrity of our elections. Corporate lawyers go into court and overturn democratically enacted laws that are attempting to assert the people's sovereign right to self-government. It's just illegitimate. So I don't have anything against corporations. It's corporations claiming constitutional rights, which, which is bullshit. Why does it matter what the Constitution says? Listen, the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Any movement that takes itself seriously has got to address and grapple with the U.S. Constitution because what I know is what you know, and that is this country is fundamentally racist, sexist, it's class oppressive, and the political economic institutions are perpetuating those oppressions and commodifying the planet and encouraging economic models that destroy the planet that we depend upon for life itself. So if you care about creating a peaceful, just, democratic, sustainable society, you've got to care about the fact that the Constitution is preventing you from being able to help to create that world. So any movement that takes itself seriously has got to grapple with the legal system. I was a practicing lawyer for, for over a decade, and I realized I could get a little bit of justice in an individual circumstance with the right fact pattern, the right judge, the right jury panel, but that the system was not designed really for justice. Mm -hmm. It just perpetuated the racist, sexist, class oppressive systems. So I want to be part of a new theory of the law that is actually premised and based upon justice. Uh, and we've got to actually grapple with how our constitution is being used against us. Does voting matter? Voting absolutely matters. Um, because remember that, you know, I have a lot of anarchist friends uh, who tell me, like, voting is for chumps. Mm -hmm. uh, or, it, you know, if voting could change anything, they'd make it illegal. To which I say, look, you know, we should use all the tools in the toolbox. You know, Asher, uh, I've sued corporate polluters. I've lobbied elected officials. I've run for office myself as both the, not just the Green Party's candidate for president in 2004, but in 2002, I ran for attorney general in Texas, pledging to use that office to revoke the charters of corporations with a history of violating health, safety, and environmental protection laws. Uh, so I've run for office, but I've also been arrested for nonviolent civil disobedience. I mean, in fact, I used to joke, I ran on my arrest record. I'm proud that I've been to jail for justice. So yes, voting matters, we have to be willing to vote, but we shouldn't pretend as if voting alone uh, is the sum total of the engagement of our civic energy. So yes, it matters and no, it doesn't. And to my anarchist friends, I tell you, I say this, look, the ballot box is where the state legitimizes itself. It also, during elections, is one of the few times where the majority of Americans are actually talking about politics. Mm. So I think it's foolish to cede that territory uh, to the corporatist and the militarist and the imperialist and not actually engage it. So absolutely voting matters, but it's a, it's, a, it's a foolish thing not to actually be voting for what you want. Do you value short-term victories or long-term victories more? <laughs> well, that's a, uh, it's a good provocative question, but I'm going to uh, 
as the good uh, anti-authoritarian I am, refuse to answer it in that frame. Because I'll tell you this, to value one over the other doesn't make sense to me. Instead, what I say is this, let's say chronologically, short-term victories are profoundly important. It inspires us, it, 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 it keeps us going, and it can make things tangibly better. But the problem is that too often, well-intentioned liberals turn a short-term victory into the goal and forget that really what we need is a transformation of all of the institutions in our society and that you can't get there in one jump. It's going to take steps along the way. So, you know, the great uh, Chinese philosopher Confucius is famous for having said a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So you must take that single step and then the next step two and three and four. So those steps are important, but as soon as you stop, then the journey is, is over. And until we've actually transformed these systems, you know, we can't, we can't make a, a, the world that we want. It is a foolish way to think about valuing one over the other. They are interrelated, and they, but they have to be working together. Now, I know in the past you have described or self-described as being an anarcho-syndicalist, but you're a lawyer by training. Um, how do you square that circle of, of the gap between being a scholar of the rules of the state and also being opposed to the state? Mm -hmm. Well, and, and how about this one to, to having run for office uh, within the state? And to me, I don't actually find those inherently contradictory uh, concepts because I believe you, we must use all the tools in the toolbox. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, I don't want to just get my hands on the levers of the existing state. I want to get to it so that we can dismantle the existing apparatus and create new ones that mm -hmm. are actually based on power with rather than power over. Genuine, little d, democratic, uh, fem explicitly feminist models where we're actually sharing power with one another in a collaborative, cooperative manner. So to me, I don't think that it's any, um, I don't find it inherently contradictory. And I'll tell you this, when I meet somebody who says, oh, well, you can't be an anarchist because you've run for office or because you practice law or because any of those things. Honestly, my answer is, okay, I'll cede that word to you because I'm not interested in fighting over words. I'm interested in communicating. Mm -hmm. And I do think that I, I am pretty obviously anti-authoritarian. You know, I am uh, anti-oppression. And I think that those are the concepts that I really care about. And so, you know, it, it, once we begin to have an understanding of what those concepts mean and then begin to try to apply them in our day-to-day -day organizing and in our day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. and say, well, how, what would it look like if in, in every moment of in, every interaction I tried to be conscious and aware and deliberate about being anti-racist, uh, uh, feminist, you know, uh, loving and compassionate, you know, what would that look like as I begin to live my life? then, you know, you make a path by walking. It's a great story, uh, and it, 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 it has to do with both power and how one thinks about power and the legal system. And so many times, uh, sort of the left or liberals or, or activists uh, go to lawyers to ask what we're allowed to do. Uh, and it puts me to mind uh, a story where John D. Rockefeller brought in his general counsel, his you know, biggest, baddest lawyer, uh, and began to tell him about, uh, uh, Rockefeller began to explain what, what he had in mind. And his lawyer said, well, you can't do that, that's illegal. And Rockefeller is reported to take a cigar out of his mouth and point his finger to the lawyer and said, hey, I pay you to tell me how, to, how I can do what I want to do, not how to tell me not to. Rockefeller had an understanding about his own power and how to exercise it and how the law, like, like if I want to do something, I'll just make it legal, mm -hmm. right? I think the problem has been that too many times, uh, at least in the last 20 years, progressive activists and social change agents have actually kowtowed to the legal system and, and been willing to stay within the boxes uh, that, the, that the system has created for us about what we're allowed to do or what we can or cannot do. And I'll tell you straight up, Asher, uh, the system is designed to make sure that you can't actually like, make any real systemic change. If you stay within the box of what the legal system, the political system, the economic system allows you to do, you have basically said, we're not going to make any systemic change, we'll just tinker at the margins. And I'll look back to another reason I'm a third party activist or an alternative party activist is because I know that the establishment parties 
are called the established parties because they exist to perpetuate and protect the interest of the current establishment. And I want to transform it, not tinker with it. Lastly, if uh, someone is interested in getting involved with Move to Amend, uh, what can they do? Well, first and foremost, please go to the website www.movetoamend.org and if Asher is as good as I think he is right about now, somewhere maybe right about here, mm -hmm. uh, it probably says movetoamend.org. So go to that and sign up on that petition. You know, Asher, we didn't even exist two years ago. Today we have over 230 thousand people as member supporters. I've never been involved with anything that has moved so fast and has grown so rapidly. It's really stunning. Uh, so th that's the first thing. And if you don't have access to the internet, call us 707-269-0984. 707-269-0984. Uh, and then secondly, uh, if you're in a community where there's already a move to amend affiliate where people are doing work, educating, agitating, organizing, uh, you know, get involved there. Third thing that you can do is to start to go to candidate debates and forums and questionnaires and ask candidates, do you believe that a corporation has constitutional rights? Do you believe that money is speech? And if you were elected, what are you going to do to help uh, amend the U.S. Constitution? These are legitimate questions that I think that should be uh, asked at uh, forums, whether they're Democrats, Republicans, Greens, Libertarians, Independents, everybody ought to be, like that's the question that ought to be asked of all candidates for office. Lastly, run for office yourself. <laughs>